Hi there, everyone. We're just waiting a little bit till more people get on, but thanks for joining us. We'll start up here pretty soon. Uh, let's see. Let's see some people I know in here. Bridget, let me just know if my camera and video is looking fine. going to text you here. Okay, good. Good, good. Yay. Hi, Steve. Happy to have you here. Of other people coming on. Hi, Julie. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Katie. All right, I'm just going to wait another minute and then we'll get started. No one's typing in their dream vacation yet. I'll I'll say mine. I think probably right about now somewhere really warm, maybe like in the South Pacific. How's that sound? Like? Right. I'm just going to wait another minute and then we'll get started. Like we've got a decent group for who's supposed to be here. <laughs> That's good, Steve. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So, um, and then you can just type in some questions just so how we're going to go through this. I'll go through a series of slides where I'm going to talk about um, our reset programs that we're offering right now and um, which we, we routinely offer, but we're kind of doing it as a group and we're offering a discount right now to get people sort of um, on the path to wellness, uh, a way to kind of get more people on track, especially this time of year where a lot of people are wanting to make some change. Um, and then we'll go through a lot of questions at the end. And so I won't hold you on the line too long here, but um, what we'll do is we'll we'll just go ahead and go through the slides. You can put any questions in here and um, I'll try to keep an eye on them here as we're going. And then I'm going to get to all the, if I haven't covered anything in the slides, I will cover it at the end. So thanks for joining me, of course. I'm glad you could um, take some time away to up by and um, hear about our program. So tonight we're going to cover why you should even complete what we're calling a reset program. Um, as I said, we'll go over the programs we're offering this year. And I'll, as I go through those, I'll help you kind of like figure out the differences between them and maybe come up with which program might be best for you. And certainly if you have a really specific like medical question, you can ask us that as like myself or one of the doctors privately, you don't have to ask on here or during this chat. And then also uh, commonly asked questions. And because you're attending tonight, I'll let you know how to get a free body composition test at our clinic and go over for what that actually is for any of you who are not familiar with that. So first of all, why would we think about a reset program? So obviously it's January, everyone's thinking about health in general, um, making some changes. Some people might be doing dry January, you know, getting rid of alcohol. Some people maybe are lowering sugar, starting an exercise program. What I want you to start to think about is toxicity in your environment. So if you haven't ever done a cleanse or a detox program, that's part of our reset programs and a big focus of it. And then we do have another reset program that I'll go over that's not technically a, a detox or a cleanse. So 
first, let's just talk about chemicals. And everyone pretty much has a toxic load. Um, at birth, babies have been shown to have like 200 chemicals circulating in their bloodstream. Um, more than 700 chemicals have been found in adults. And we often get this data from fat biopsies. So a lot of fat, a lot of chemicals are stored in fat. And this is where we discover them. Um, 80,000 different chemicals have been introduced into our environment since World War II, and a lot of the health effects of those chemicals, we still don't know. Some are well documented, um, but some we don't know. Uh, 2,300 new chemicals are introduced annually, and over, this is, you know, a later, late, latest statistic is over 4 billion pounds of pesticides are used annually in the United States. Now, the other thing the issue with pesticides is that pesticides will come in on food that is imported into the country. So other countries can have different laws around pesticides and they're not 100% screen coming into the United States. So you can have, uh, even if you're, you know, think you're eating clean and living in the United States and a lot of chemicals that we think have been banned, you could still be exposed to those from imported um, chemicals. A number of years back, I did a full um, workup on myself, blood testing to look at the types of chemicals that were actually in my body. It's a pretty expensive test. It's eight or nine hundred dollars. If anyone's interested in doing it, happy to order it. Um, but you know, pretty much you're going to see chemicals showing up. And I was sort of surprised because I think that I like at the time I thought, okay, well, I eat pretty clean. I try to really reduce my exposure to chemicals. And I had pesticides showing up in my bloodstream, kind of weird ones that I think we, I had done it just after the holidays, probably from being at events, eating non-organic food, um, even though it's fresh fruit or, or vegetables, you can still see chemicals on, especially pesticide type chemicals. I had also done some painting around that time, used low VOC paint, but I was like removing wallpaper. So potentially there was some exposure there. Um, I did have a very low BPA level. So that's something that is found in plastics. It's found in the liners of cups. And I do, you know, make a really conscious effort to try to avoid BPA, bisphenol A, um, which is a hormone disruptor. So I was happy to see that was low, but I did have some markers that were a little bit elevated. So, you know, pretty much everyone is getting this uh, exposure to toxins and that can come from food. As I just mentioned, it can come from plastics. It could come from air pollution, contaminated water, certainly smoking. There's a host of chemicals in there. Um, alcohol, uh, stress produces chemicals in the body that kind of act as a burden to, um, your liver, which allows like chemicals to basically build up in your bloodstream that you're not really excreting them properly because you have an excess burden from the um, stress in your system and a disrupted gut microbiome too. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, certainly medications, personal care products are a really big source of chemicals. So using their great apps that are available, great sources online to check your personal care products to try to get the cleanest products available. And then certainly trying to avoid exposure to herbicides and insecticides, pesticides around your home. Um, and food packaging even can be a source of environmental chemicals. So, you know, those are some sources. As I mentioned, you can also have a burden of toxic exposure from uh, endotoxin building up in your gut. And so that means that bacteria that naturally live in your gut or potentially have been overgrowing and some potentially pathogenic bacteria, fungal components, parasites, those can excrete what are called endotoxins or exotoxins. And then those have to get processed by the liver. And then your liver is already processing some of these chemical ingredients found in foods, um, xenobiotics, different sorts of organic compounds. I'm not talking about organic food, organic chemical compounds found in our environment. And then um, 
even, you know, processing alcohol, that all puts this excess burden on the liver for being able to process uh, toxins properly. And then excessive exercise, that should say, eccentric is a type of exercise, but excessive exercise, sorry about that typo, um, inflammation, injuries, that can create um, an, an increase in burden on the liver. So that all adds up basically. So we can have, you know, very toxic chemicals we've been exposed to, or could just be a variety of less toxic chemicals, but there's a lot of them. The amount of time you've been exposed to them, um, the amount of course matters, but then there's also this concept of genetic susceptibility. So people can, you know, two people with, you know, that are unrelated can be exposed to the same sorts of chemicals if we kind of put them, you know, in a, a experimental environment. And some people do have genes that decrease their ability to clear toxins, especially through the liver. And that can make you much more susceptible to having more of a toxic burden where you're not able to get those chemicals um, out of your body and it's building up in your fat mass and even like in routine circulation. So another thing I'll have to do is just check for heavy metals. So when we do blood testing, we can check for things like mercury and arsenic um, that could be coming from food sources. A lot of times we'll see that coming from sushi and you can see it in the bloodstream, not even stored, like it's circulating, but some of that is going potentially to be getting stored and there's a way of testing for that as well. Um, and then of course, like overall health status, if there is something going on with your liver that's decreasing your ability to clear, if you have some issues with your liver or with your kidneys, or also if the root, roots of elimination, like if you're not having regular bowel movements, that can reduce your ability to clear toxins. All of that adds up and puts what's called, like basically it's what we call a toxic burden on us. Um, some of these toxic chemicals are referred to as obesogens. And they are these, those are the chemicals that are st often stored in the fat tissue and they can disrupt your hormonal balance and your metabolism resulting in obesity. So when patients come to us, sometimes we um, are doing blood work uh, related to weight loss resistance to look at chemicals in the environment um, that you might've been exposed to. A lot of that we can't necessarily test through Quest, as I mentioned. Um, that can be more extensive, expensive testing, but you don't always have to test. Like everyone's going to have a burden. So this is why we think about if you've never done a detox or a cleanse, a reset, um, it can be really helpful if you're dealing with weight loss resistance. And weight loss resistance, what I'm referring to here is just, you know, you're exercising, eating what seems to be a pretty healthy diet, and it's just not adding up. You're not able to lose weight. And, you know, these are the things perhaps that you did in the past and you were able to lose weight and now you can't. Um, so we always think about detox as a potential treatment option there, or a starting point to get back on track and clear some of those chemicals out of your system. So some symptoms of a toxic body. Now, these are, are general. As I mentioned, weight loss resistance is on here. And these can be coming from all the reasons too. It can be coming from inflammation. So these are nonspecific, but they could be a sign of a toxic body. So if you're dealing with things like chronic headaches, joint pain, fatigue, allergies, uh, immune susceptibilities, meaning you're frequently ill or like getting infections and having difficulty uh, getting over it or it's turning into a secondary bacterial infection, that could be a sign of a toxic burden. Um, mood swings, constipation, uh, chronic sinus congestion, joint pain, chronic back aches, but even blood sugar problems. There's a lot of data linking pre-diabetes and diabetes to um, a toxic burden in the liver and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So a fatty liver not related to alcohol consumption. There's a lot of data also linking that to toxins uh, getting stored in the body and, and difficulty with clearance. Skin conditions, hormonal imbalances, um, which can be from specific toxins that act as um, hormone disruptors. 
abdominal pain, difficulty concentrating. So you don't have to have all of these. You could have any one of these, and that could be a sign of toxicity. And you'll know if it is toxicity if you start doing a reset program or a cleanse and you start seeing a lot of these symptoms clear up. And that's what we often see clinically is, um, you know, there's a little questionnaire you can do with a lot of these kits. And at the beginning, you basically get a score of like how, you know, your, your overall symptoms and you'll get a number. And then afterwards you would rescore and a, almost a hundred percent of the time we would see those numbers coming down unless there was something else medically going on with that person. Um, so the good news is that our body is designed to naturally cleanse and detoxify through the liver and very capable of handling, handling a lot of toxins. However, our system can get overwhelmed by the level of toxins and overexposure in the environment and the accumulation over time. So that is what we're talking about here. Um, is the toxic burden that builds up over time and doing a reset or a cleanse can really help to get you back on track and improve your health and, and get your system like back on track with the natural ability to clear toxins. So let's talk about those programs. What can we do? Um, our overall approach, first of all, is to try to identify and remove any sources of contamination. So eating a diet that's low in pesticides, low in food additives, you know, switching to more of a whole foods diet will really lower the amount of chemicals that are coming in. That is primarily where a lot of the burden comes from. Now, certainly if you're living in an environment or like participating in hobbies or work that is a constant exposure of toxins, there are, um, you know, potentially ways that you could reduce that burden a little bit, depending on types of selections of products that maybe you could use there. But for example, if you, you know, we think about different professions, so like firefighters are, um, exposed to a lot of toxins and there's not a lot we can do there. So a lot of times we just have to do like routine support where they are um, on a regular basis taking supplements that help to regularly clear toxins and then periodically doing a full like cleanse program. Um, and then that's what I, I mean here when I'm talking about protecting against damage from toxins, that would be taking essentially supplements that help to support those detox pathways. Um, and then also, um, thinking about like, you know, of course, like looking at overall health status to make sure there's nothing significantly going on with the liver, with the kidney dealing with problems like constipation and make sure that all those routes of elimination are working, that you can sort of clear things out of your system effectively. And so if anything was off there, we would be working on, you know, a correcting bowel motility or supporting liver function if there were actually abnormalities there that we needed to support specifically. And then um, this is the first cleanse that I want to talk about. So if we're talking about doing a full on like reset or cleanse program. This is one of the newer programs that we've been using in our practice. Well, I started introducing this last year. I did it myself first, of course. Um, this cleanse is really interesting because the base in the shake is a collagen base. And then there are packets of supplements that go along with it that enhance liver, gallbladder, gut health to help really boost those pathways of elimination. Um, so the way that you do this program is that you, well, let me just go over this for a second and then I'll go back to the 15 versus 30 day. So each shake would contain 17 grams of collagen. So it's packaged pretty conveniently that each shake is a packet. So if you're traveling, these are easy. If you're at work or something, you can take the packets with you. Um, the packet of the shake also contains fiber. It contains a supplement called nitro greens, which is an organic greens powder. And of course that helps really support detox pathways and gut health. 
It also has MCTs in there, which are median chain triglycerides. So again, enhancing metabolism on that aspect. It's a berry vanilla flavored shake. I like to mix it with almond milk with water. This one is a little like hard to handle, I would say. All of these tend to be better when you mix it with a nut milk. Um, you could also use like flax milk here if you had a nut allergy. Um, it really just makes these shakes a lot more creamy. This one, because it's collagen, I would also, we have like a recipe if anyone's interested in doing it. I would also use an actual like little mini blender to blend this one. Um, and you can also add like a little bit like of nut butter. I put some raw almond butter in here with this, some like blueberries. And then of course it's free of like our all artificial sweeteners. All of these are going to be free of everything like that. It's gluten and dairy free. Now this one, because it's collagen is not vegan or vegetarian. So if you're want, looking for something like that, that would be one of the other programs, which I'll go over next. This is collagen and we love collagen because collagen supports like a healthy gut barrier. So like, you know, when we think about leaky gut and gut health, collagen is great there. Great for your hair, skin and nails. It's great for your joints. So there's a lot of good reasons to think about using collagen as part of a cleanse. And of course it has all those other ingredients in there. Um, the way I see a question here about, do you eat food while you're on this? Yes. So this cleanse and the next two that I'm going to talk about, you would eat food along with it. So you're doing shakes, pills, and then a food program. So you would eat an abundance of like food. So basically like all of these detox programs, and then we'll talk about the fasting mimicking diet, which is our other, um, reset program, but this particular program here and the other cleanses or detoxes are not going to be calorie restrictive. So if you're hungry, you know, you can eat from the foods that are on here. So you're basically going to be on more sort of a whole 30 type program, dairy free, gluten free, um, you're eating. So if you do 15 days, so this is the, sort of how you can set it up. If you did a 15 day cleanse with this collagen program, you would do two shakes as meals and then a, basically another meal. So you would have sort of like lean protein and vegetables on as your meal. So a lot of people do like do really well on this program. They can, you can lose some weight, although like it's not calorie restrictive. Um, you know, a lot of times you're cutting out a lot of things like sugar and a lot of like heavy starches and things like that. So this is a really great program there. Um, and put in any questions here. If you have questions about the collagen cleanse and all, I can come back to it. So it's pretty easy, really straightforward to do. There's a little booklet that comes with this, of course, just like all of the programs. It's really detailed, tells you exactly the foods that you should be eating, gives you some meal ideas. Um, and then I would say specifically with this one, when you're mixing the shake, like I would definitely not use the blender cup, a blender bottle. The other ones you can easily blend with a blender bottle if you're in a rush. I would use one of those like quick, like a Nutribullet or something like that for this one, just because collagen is really like her, like it's a little harder to get into solution, but it tastes really good once you like blend it properly. So I like this one. All right. So then the next one that, um, we would, we are offering and we, again, we always have these. So like, this is a good time to do it where these are on sale, 10% off, but you can do these at any time. So this one, SP Detox, we've been doing this for quite a few years now. This is a program that came out probably about five years ago, and it does have a good amount of clinical research behind it. It has been clinically studied and validated for the clearance of toxins. And there's even a study, um, a colleague of mine who runs the Scripps Pain Management Center, Robert Benactar in California. Um, he's a uh, pain specialist, so like MD, you know, chronic pain specialist, and he's actually done a clinical study for this with this program on patients with chronic pain, patients with migraines, and during a 28-day program, it was demonstrated a re significant reduction in pain, and there's a lot of data on um, detox and toxic burden and chronic pain. So if that's something that you're dealing with as well, that's another 
thought about like how detox can be helpful sort of in the long run too. Um, this one is vegan. So this is the only one of the cleanses that's actually fully vegan. It's gluten-free and dairy-free. Of course, all of these are gluten-free and dairy-free. Um, it only has a shake. So there's no pills with this one. So if you're someone that really doesn't like to take a lot of pills, this is a good option. This comes in a 10 day and a 28 day version. Oh, I didn't mention. So back to the, um, collagen, I said that you can do a 15 day or a 30 day. If you're doing a 15 day, you're doing two shakes and two pill packets a day. If you do a 30 day, you're basically doing it a little less intensive. And then you're just doing one shake and one pill packet and two clean meals per day. So that's a, the way that you sort of structure that. If you have any questions, definitely ask me. So somewhat similarly here, there's a 10 day and a 28 day. I always think, you know, 28 day with this, you're, you are not like reducing your doses. So that's a little bit different if you're doing the Nutra, the collagen cleanse, you're reducing dosages by extending it to 30 days, unless you want to do like two full, you know, packages back to back, which is an option. Sometimes we do that with patients that are dealing with a big toxic burden. But this one, 10 and 28 days, it's still the same sort of like dosing schedule. If you're doing it longer, you're clearing more toxins, basically, you're getting more effect from it. Um, the other thing we think about when we're doing like a longer program is that you do ease into it a little bit more. And so it's a little less harsh on the body. And so for people who are really chronically ill, um, you know, we do a lot of medical guidance with those patients and we would recommend then doing more of like a longer program instead of like a quick burst, because sometimes that can be a little bit too intensive a 10 day. But if you're generally healthy, 10 day, this 10 day program works really well for people, unless you are someone who is really dealing with really significant uh, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, like really not doing well, chronic Lyme, we would think about doing a longer version. Again, if you have any questions specifically about medical um, guidance with your specific needs, you don't need to ask on here, please reach out to me or one of the doctors at the clinic will be happy to guide you specifically in which, which version or which program we think is right for you. Um, then the next cleanse program, so this is the third one. So we've got the collagen cleanse. We've got the SP detox cleanse. This one is called the clear change program. This is the program that's been around the longest. I still really love this program. Um, it's one of my favorites. I love all of them really. And I've seen great results with all of them, but there's some nuances among them. So it's great to offer like different programs to meet everybody's needs. Um, so again, this is a metabolic detox cleanse. This one is, we can't say it's vegan, it's vegetarian. Um, the only thing is that the vitamin D is what keeps it from being vegan. So if you're really staunchly vegan and you want to do like a non-animal source, so basically like vitamin D three is sourced from sheep like lanolin. Um, and that is why this has is called vegetarian and not vegan. So um, that that's the only difference there. It is, of course, gluten free and dairy free. This one is the shake container. So just like with the SP detox, this is not an individually packaged shake, it is in a container. And this does come with one supplement, Advoclear. So it's just like one pill. It's not a package of pills. And then you're basically dosing that depending on what day in the program you're on. So this is very, again, very science-based, designed to support and aid the clearance of detox um, uh, uh, to, to get rid of that toxic burden um, that comes from as, as we went through dietary habits and environmental chemicals. Um, this program, if you do a 10 day days, five to seven are the most intensive days here. And on the day, if you do a 28 day program, it's basically like the middle week. So it's a little bit longer. And at that point on the dietary plan, you're really just 
pretty restrictive and you get people get really great results on this program, but it is a little bit more restrictive and you're going to be eating green vegetables and lean protein, basically like fish and green vegetables. So it's a little hard for some people to get through those days. For people who really don't like fish, then I'll let them, like I, I recommend modifying it and then you can do organic poultry um, during those days. That's okay. But for best results, it's basically like low mercury, clean fish and green vegetables days five through seven on the 10 day program, along with the shake. And during that time, then you're doing like multiple shakes a day with basically a meal and you can have snacks as well. Again, this program is not calorie restrictive. You can eat the foods based on where you are in the program, like what is a, an approved food. So you're again, going to be avoiding things like dairy, you're avoiding gluten, a lot of grains, you're avoiding here all the major like potential allergens too. And this also gives us an opportunity at the end of any of these cleanses, if you're doing it long enough over three, like over three weeks, that when you finish, you could consider reintroducing some of those foods that you've um, eliminated to sort of challenge them and determine whether you're having some sort of like potentially a food sensitivity or a food intolerance. So that's something to consider if you're um, doing one of these programs and going over three weeks on it, that you could use it also as an opportunity to eliminate and challenge to identify food sensitivity. We can also do really great food sensitivity testing now if you don't want to go through that whole process of elimination and challenge. Um, but as I said, this is a really good um, um, option for identifying food sensitivity at the at the end of this program. Um, okay, and then I see a question here about what keeps you hydrated besides water. So yeah, you definitely want to stay hydrated on here. Water is going to be important, but if you're adding in things like almond milk, that's going to add to hydration level here too. Um, and when you're drinking water, water that has a higher pH and, and you know, more um, trace minerals in there, that does, has been shown to hydrate your cells a little bit more effectively. And then finally, moving a little bit out of this category, but still in that whole like reset mindset of like getting on a clean diet, getting rid of a lot of toxins in your life. Um, this is different. So this is what's called a fasting mimicking diet. So completely different than a cleanse, but also what we would consider a reset. So this should be five day FMD, fasting mimic mimicking diet program. Sorry about that typo. Um, this particular program, again, is backed by a ton of science. This is designed by a longevity researcher, um, Walter Longo from um, USC, and he is the premier researcher on anti-aging, essentially. And so this is a five-day kit. Everything in that kit is what you eat. So you're not eating anything except what's like provided in the kit. It reverses your biological age. If you do the three rounds of this. So it's a five-day kit and it's uh, the research has shown if you do three months in a row, so not back to back, like five days, five days, five days, you do five days, you wait 30 days, then you do another five days and then wait 30, do another five days. That reverses your biological age by three years, which is like crazy. Um, and what's happening, the science there is that it's inducing a process called autophagy by day three of the program. And a new study just came out on this, even after the program is over on day five, at day seven, they were still measuring that your body is still in this process called autophagy. And that is where you're basically clearing out and getting rid of what are called like old senescent cells. So cells that don't work as well, that could be contributing to more of a sluggish metabolism. Um, this is really great for people who are stuck, have tried many dietary changes, they're not losing weight. Um, so I see a question there about biological age. Does a body scanner do this? No, but there is a kit that you can actually test for biological age. There's some scores you can do online where you can do like a questionnaire and find out your biological age, which is okay. It's not great. 
but there is a particular like specific test if you're interested i'll message you about what that is um, it's pretty expensive but you can do testing to look at your biological age um and then so let me tell you a little bit more about like what it's doing specifically with your metabolism so you're you're eating a lower calorie diet on this but your body thinks that you're fasting so although you're eating food, although low calorie, your body perceives that you're in a fasting state. And this is why by day three, you get into this process called autophagy. Interesting, and it's always surprising to people if you look at the nutritional profile in this program, that there's not that much protein. It is you know, all really just plant-based sort of Mediterranean style foods but there's no muscle loss that happens on this. You're only going to lose body fat. And studies have shown that you re uh, um, on average, people reduce their BMI by 4%, losing an average of seven pounds of fat over three rounds. And clinically, we often see more than that. And I've seen patients who like lose, like I personally lost five pounds of body fat and I don't like have that much body fat to lose, but like there was some there to lose. Like you'll only lose what you need to lose. Uh, but I just like earlier in the fall did this and I was down in one round, five pounds of body fat. So if you have more fat to lose, it really does really specifically target that body fat. And again, like I'm really interested in anti-aging and, you know, um, longevity and metabolism, which was what like got me to do it. But I, of course, attract myself, which you can track doing the in-body, which I'll talk about here. Um, question here was about limiting exercise during those days. Yes. So for Prolon, even for the cleanses, just so you know how you're adjusting to those cleanses, if you um, are, you know, intensively exercising, you just want to kind of like watch and see how you were on a cleanse and, and do it at whatever pace you can. This particular program, because you're eating such a low calorie diet, the recommendation is to really sort of take it easy. Don't go overboard on exercise. You can, you know, go for walks. That's what I did. Um, but you really don't want to overdo it on exercise on this particular program. Um, the other things that we see on this program that has been clinically shown in a couple of different studies on this now, um, reductions in LDL cholesterol, so that's that bad cholesterol, reduces triglycerides, which is another one of those blood fats, reduces hemoglobin A1C by an average of 1.4 points, which if you're familiar with uh, hemoglobin A1C, that's measuring sort of like the damage from high blood sugar levels and 1.4 is a pretty big reduction. And this would be over three rounds of that. Um, and then it's also been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. And then we recommend with Prolon, like certainly you can just do one and, you know, see how you do it and what your results are. But ideally you would do with Prolon, do those three rounds the first time you do it, kind of like each over the course of three consecutive months. And then um, the recommendation is to do it basically every season, every three to four months, you do another one um, just to like continue to keep that autophagy process, keeping to continue to get rid of those old cells that um, build up as we age. Um, so this other, some other benefits of the Prolon program is that it improves food behavior. So even after people finish the program, they find that they have a reduction in sugar cravings, become more mindful of food choices. I would say that's also true of any of the cleanse, the detox programs too, that especially if you're going out and doing more of like the 28 day versions and you're avoiding sugar that long, you're basically going to be off like sugar, that sugar cycle by the time you get there. And so for people who are really addicted to sugar, doing a detox and a cleanse is excellent. Like that's an excellent approach. And we, we've recommended that for patients like, you know, for years and years. Uh, there are no serious known side effects from this Prolon program and nothing, of course, that persists after the program is completed. Um, I do want to just touch on uh, the gut health again. I did say a little bit about it, but if you have an unhealthy gut, so that means like inflammation in the gut, but specifically because it, it results in inflammation, but specifically an imbalanced microbiome, um, that causes inflammation and that inflammation doesn't just stay in the gut. It goes, you know, it contributes to everything in your body. And so we know that it 
can um, be a trigger and can also worsen conditions like diabetes, depression, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune diseases, um, even cancer and Alzheimer's. Another important factor about gut health is that 95% of serotonin, which is your happy neurotransmitter, is made and stored in the gut. And this is why a lot of times people who are dealing with depression and anxiety, we look at gut health there because of that link there. Um, the other thing is that serotonin influences appetite. So especially appetite for carbohydrates. So if you have low serotonin levels, which is something we can actually test for with a metabolite using a urine test. If anyone's interested in, in that test, we can order that through Quest. Um, so you can ask about that at your next visit with any of you know your doctors, um, whole health doctors. <laughs> you could ask your primary care doctor, but they probably wouldn't know what we're talking about, but it's a 5-H-I-A-A, and it's a basically a simple urine collection, and we can measure serotonin in the gut in that way. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is, which I kind of did before, but I do want to emphasize, is that when we're exposed to toxins and it's not getting like cleared completely out of our system, then it's getting stored in our fat cells. So when we burn fat, and if you lose a lot of weight, you're going to release toxins back into the bloodstream and those have to get processed by the liver. So if you are on a weight loss program, we do recommend like definitely really trying to support the liver health along that way. And so um, detox, if you're already on a cleanse, it's going to be supported, obviously. But we might think about, you know, nutrients from the diet that really help support cleanse. And that would be things like cruciferous vegetables support the um, liver, lemons, like fresh lemon, like a half a lemon squeezed in water in the morning is a great way to support the liver. Um, another thing we think about is just like a simple supplement of milk thistle. And that's a really tonic, gentle herb for the liver. And that can be really helpful for helping to keep your liver, you know, protected from toxins. It's a really great antioxidant um, and enhances clearance and, and a very safe herb to use long-term. When we think about herbs that are tonic in nature, they're really um, safe to use is part of the definition of that. Um, contraindications I do want to point out. So obviously if you were pregnant or nursing, we really don't have any pregnant women or nursing women doing a cleanse or certainly prolon, especially with the cleanse. Like you don't want to like expose a baby obviously or fetus or like, and for nursing to like an excessive burden of toxins. And this is even a factor like when, women come in and they're postpartum and they really, you know, they want to get rid of this weight. We counsel them to like do it slow and steady, not aggressively. Cause as I just mentioned, when you're burning off fat mass, you're burning off, like uh, you're, you're releasing toxins, those toxic chemicals into the bloodstream and into breast milk. So um, definitely caution there. Um, the other, some of the other main contraindications, certain medications. So there are really like a, only a few medications. I won't mention all of them specifically, but, uh, medications that really need to have very precise blood levels. Um, if you were on, you know, like anti-clotting medications, if you were on antipsychotic medications that need to maintain a certain blood level, heart medications. We often would not recommend a cleanse in these cases. A lot of medications, it's still really safe to do a cleanse, but if you are on any medicines, you should just check one of, one of our doctors and make sure that it's right for you. Um, kidney disease would be a contraindication because we're increasing the clearance of toxins and they those also need to go through the kidney and if your kidney is already struggling to clear um and filter your blood we wouldn't want to push a lot of chemicals through there so people with chronic kidney kidney disease we don't do a full like cleanse there are ways of supporting um the liver and helping with the toxic burden but not one of these reset programs Certain liver diseases, again, would be a contraindication. Something like just like 
fatty liver disease is not a contraindication. We actually can actually help fatty liver disease by doing a cleanse. Um, really serious medical conditions, obviously, if someone was dealing with cancer, going through treatment, other serious medical conditions, frailty, you know, we are not recommending something intensive like a cleanse to them. If you're not sure if a reset program is right for you, just reach out to us and um, ask us and we'll be happy to help you. And then also, you know, guide you in the right direction of what would be safe to do. Like there are still things that we can recommend to help kind of cleanse and, and help metabolism. Um, that wouldn't be as intensive as this, but still would be beneficial. Um, any, can any of the cleanses throw off your menstrual cycle or hormones? We tend to not see that being a problem. And a lot of times for most people who are dealing with issues with their periods, cleansing could be a really good option to address some of those hormonal abnormalities. Um, but usually, yeah, we don't see any problems with that. I, I've never run into that before with like problems with hormones as a result of doing a cleanse. All right, so let's get into a little bit more with InBody and then we'll go over some more questions that we've been collecting and I'll go over those here pretty soon. So body composition testing, in-body testing is what we love to do. We have this piece of equipment at our office. If any of you have ever had it before, I'm sure you're familiar with some of the measurements on here. So this is the best way to measure that belly fat, the visceral adipose tissue. It will evaluate muscle, total body fat, as well as like sectional body fat. So it'll tell you like how much muscle you have in like each arm, your legs, your core, and measures fat there too. And so this is a really great tool to look at like what's happening with your body. Um, and we can do that, a lot of times it's great to do that before and after a cleanse, um, just to see the difference as you go through a cleanse. So if anyone purchases a cleanse, then they can have, we're offering a free in-body assessment. So you can choose to do that at any point before or after you do the cleanse. And this is a sample report here. Some of you are probably familiar with this, but it does show like, you know, your BMI, it tells you your overall muscle mass, your percent body fat. It does have this measurement on here for visceral fat as well. So just um, let us know if you're interested in getting a complimentary in-body um, when you, if you're purchasing a cleanse. And then red light therapy is another really great add-on to consider. So this is our in-body Theralite 360. Looks like a big tanning bed. There's no UV light in here um, that comes out. So the only um, light that's being um, emitted from this machine is red light. So it's both visible red light and invisible infrared light. And it is FDA cleared for addressing pain and inflammation. It's just a 15 minute session. It's a really great way to help with metabolic health and reduce inflammation. So that's an excellent add on. A lot of people will choose to do along with a detox. So let's finish off with some questions. So some of these were questions we've already collected. And I think I've gotten a lot of the questions that have come in here already. So. Um, will I need to be in the bathroom a lot? That's a question we've get, gotten. And of course, like we get this question quite a bit. Um, no. So if you're, if you've ever done like some of these over the counter, like cleanses that you can find at Walmart or wherever, a lot of those like cleanses or detoxes are just filled with laxative herbs. They're not what we call a metabolic cleanse. So you should not need to be in the bathroom a lot, meaning like it's not gonna give you diarrhea. That's not what a cleanse does. Um, we do want you to be like urinating pretty regularly. So if you're in the bathroom to go pee, good. That's great. Cause we want you to really be like peeing this stuff out. And we do want you to have a bowel movement like once a day, ideally. Um, some people, you know, it's, it's normal also to go two and even three times a day. So that's not a problem as long as it's formed. Um, but people shouldn't be like rushing off to the bathroom urgently being on a cleanse. That's not a side effect of this particular, of these metabolic cleanses. You'll only see that if you're on like a laxative program, basically. Um, will I feel hungry? So on the cleanses, so that would be the collagen cleanse, the SP detox, 
and the clear change program, the first three that we talked about, you shouldn't feel hungry because it's not calorie restricted. So you're eating a shake, you're eating foods. However, people do have, like, especially in those initial days, they're feeling um, like they're coming off, like depending on how you're coming into this, if you are coming into it, eating a lot of sugar, eating a lot of processed carbs, that transition off of those foods can make you feel like kind of hangry, I guess is a better word for it. <laughs> but you can satisfy a lot of that by like, you can eat like fruit on here. A lot of times I'll tell people to eat like frozen raspberries. You want to try to keep all of this stuff organic. That's a good way to kind of get like some of that sugar craving that you're dealing with. Um, but you shouldn't be feeling necessarily like hungry because you can eat whatever you want essentially on those cleanses. On the Prolon program, on the other hand, it is calorie restricted, although a lot of people who do it, and including myself, the way it's structured, it's basically putting you into sort of a fasted state. So you're not, you're surprisingly not that hungry on it. You can feel a little like, oh, I could, you kind of miss food, but it's not like that, like real serious physical hunger that you will feel on the prolon. So it's an interesting feeling going through prolon. If any of you have never done it before, it's a, um, I think it's a well-balanced program to get around those hunger feelings. Do I have to stop caffeine? That always get this question. So ideally, yes, you go off caffeine during these cleanses because it's going to help the cleanse work better. So because caffeine gets cleared by the liver, we want to reduce the amount of caffeine coming in to allow your liver to spend that activity clearing toxins, basically. So the way to go about it is like the week before you do the cleanse, you start reducing your coffee intake. If you really feel like you can't get off caffeine completely, I often recommend switching at least to green tea from coffee. And you could do like a cup of green tea a day. You'll be getting like 30, 35 milligrams, maybe a little bit more, depends on how you prepare your green tea. You'll still be getting a little bit of caffeine, but it's a different, it also comes with, you know, L-theanine, a lot of antioxidants as well, especially antioxidants that are in there that it doesn't interfere with the cleanse so much. Um, so ideally stop caffeine, but you're still going to get a lot of benefit if you drink get green, if you stay on green tea, that's okay. So, you know, we still see good results with that. What about alcohol? Again, alcohol gets cleared by the liver. We really want to like avoid alcohol during this sort of cleanse. So you should be able to stop alcohol. I really recommend going off alcohol during these cleanses. Now, if you're doing like a 28 day, 30 day version of one of these cleanses and it's a full month and it's a really special occasion, if you have like a little bit of alcohol, I'm talking like a half a drink kind of thing because you just want to like participate in some like milestone event or something, that's not going to mess up your cleanse completely. But we really want to just basically keep this period dry, just like a dry January on the cleanse. And especially if you're doing like a 10 day, you should be able to cut alcohol out for those 10 days. Um, can I exercise? We touched on this. Definitely you want to, you know, on the ProLand program, you want to uh, really limit if, uh, serious physical exertion on the, which is like, it's a short period of time. So it's five days. On one of these 28 day programs, if you choose to do a longer cleanse, you can certainly exercise. You just want to kind of like, as those first couple of days go, you, as you pass through those first couple of days, you might want to take it easy as your body is adjusting to coming off of a lot of foods and chemicals that are not so good for you. That's when most people have these like symptoms where they might feel like a little bit lightheaded or they feel fatigued or they get a headache, which is that next question there. What should I do if I get a headache? Um, ideally, you know, like if you get a really bad headache, it is okay to take some headache medicine. Like that's okay. And it's usually just going to be those first couple of days. And it's usually from caffeine. So you can often avoid this headache by reducing your caffeine before you actually go on the cleanse and then you won't get the caffeine withdrawal headaches. That's mostly where it comes from. But if you're someone who is like 
a migraine sufferer, someone who, you know, has these ten, like serious tension headaches or headaches from barometric pressure changes, you can use your medicines, obviously. Um, we don't want you suffering from a serious headache uh, while you're on a Clintons. Just because you're on a Clintons, you can go ahead and take your medicine. And the same would be true, obviously, if you are on a prescription medicine, you don't go off your medicines uh, during this program. You keep those medicines for sure. Um, I think I got all the questions as we were going through here. If anyone else has one, go ahead and add them into the chat. Um, and then our programs, like you can get those kits at our office. We can ship them out to you, pick them up um, at our office in Farmington. If you want to do the Prolon program, then that one we don't carry at the office. You order directly from Prolon, but if you use our Prolon link, you'll get an extra 10% off of whatever uh, Prolon is offering. And that is actually all the time. So for Prolon, they offer different sorts of specials year round and um, we you can always get a 10% like provider discount when you use our link for that. The other programs um, are seasonally, we can get discounts on these. And so we have a batch of them that we ordered and we can um, offer that discount to you. So that would be the other programs. So the collagen cleanse, the clear change program, and the SP detox. And if anyone has any other questions, go ahead and add them into the chat and we'll finish off. A couple more questions I see here. Would you stay on your supplements during the program? Yeah, so for the majority, like all the cleanse programs, we pretty much have people stay on their regular supplements, just like your medicines. Um, and then on Prolon, Sometimes because it's such a short program, if there are some specific supplements, like a lot of times if I have a patient on like berberine to control like blood sugar levels, because you're going into a fast, technically a fasted state, I would have them go off of that. So if you have really specific questions about your supplement program, just let us know when we can advise you specifically on that. Another question that came in was about, um, about red light therapy and what that does. So red light therapy is in this category called photobiomodulation. So that's a long technical term that um, is sort of a blanket category about how our cells respond to light cues. And specifically, like certain types of light do different things to cells. So the light in the red light spectrum, so there's visible red light and then there's invisible red light, and both of those have really profound beneficial effects on our cells. And red light has been shown to be anti-inflammatory. It helps with cellular metabolism and what we call oxidative stress. So it really works to um, act as like a natural antioxidant, a natural anti-inflammatory. Uh, and then there are really great studies and that continue to come out that uh, of, of red light therapy for specific conditions. So on a cellular level, what we know it does is modulate like inflammatory and oxidative stress pathways. But we see this equating to a lot of different benefits in conditions. So it can be really helpful. It's been shown to be helpful for anxiety and depression. It can help with metabolism. It can help with um, the nervous system. It can help recovery from injury. So a lot of times we use it. Um, there's some good research on it for concussion recovery, uh, head injury recovery, for recovery from stroke. I've had a patient who had a stroke and we used it for stroke recovery. And um, there's good data on that. A lot of other neurological conditions like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, also some um, great studies coming out on, on those particular categories, but like host of different conditions for that. Um, let's see, any particular cleanse better for those with inflammatory bowel disease? So all of those would be great for inflammatory bowel disease because they're going to be hypoallergenic, which is always good for the bowel. Um, and supporting all those liver pathways. So you really could use any three of those um, would be equally supportive. I wouldn't say one is necessarily like outshining the others when it comes to support for um, gut health on, on that aspect. 
Um, any other questions? I'll just give you just another minute to see if there's anything else that comes back in here. I'm just going to scroll back up and see if there was anything else that came in that I missed. Um, yeah, and um, one person did mention like we had done some um, heavy metal testing and work to clear it out. And we did do that. Yeah, like that's something you can do with any of our doctors, we can totally help with heavy metal cleansing. Uh, we covered exercise. Um, there was a question about why the different time frames. So I did, I might have covered that at the time. Um, a lot of it, some of it is personal preference, how long people can commit to doing a program. So some of it is like, okay, I can wrap my head around like 10 days versus like 28 days. So some of it is basically like how, how, how long are you willing to do it? Um, but I would say the longer, the better. Like, so if you can commit to a longer cleanse, that's going to, you're going to get better results with that. But even like 10 days has been documented to show like significant benefit. And you can always do this again. So it doesn't have to be like once a year. A lot of times people are doing these like seasonally, twice a year, depends on what's going on with your overall health. Um, the reasons for cleansing, we kind of went through, there's a lot of different reasons um, that, um, you know, a lot of conditions can be related to toxicity in the body and just like to get cells and just your overall health improved. That's a really great way to approach it. Um, let me scroll back down. I think we got everything. So if anyone has any other questions, we can, uh, you can always send them to front desk email, which is in here in the chat and you guys all probably know it and we're happy to answer any other questions. Um, do I recommend the original or new flavor for the prolon for the soups? A lot of it is sort of like um, personal preference. I think that they're both good. Um, when they send the programs, they're going to send extra soups anyway. So no matter which one you order, they're sending some of those other soups too. So you're safe in whichever one you order. Um, and then is there a cleanse that's more helpful for hormone balancing? Yeah, that's a good question. So again, like I would say, if we're trying to balance out like hormones, the longer, the better is what I would say. So all three of the cleanses would be great for hormones. And I even think about Prolon as a way of like resetting a lot of things in the body. So if hormones are changing with age, Prolon can be of benefit there. So there can be two different things. Like we might want to do like a short burst with Prolon and do those and also do some cleanse support. Another way that we use cleanses is that we sometimes like I'll have patients continue, like they'll do the cleanse and then you would just continue on the shake daily as just like your maintenance basically. So just like a lot of people do a protein shake, you can do the cleanse shake as your protein shake. And then you're getting all these extra ingredients that are in there for liver health. And you just go back to your regular diet and maybe you tolerate dairy fine. You tolerate a lot of these foods that are cut out on the um, detox and cleanse program. And, you know, you tolerate them fine, which is good. And you just use your um, daily shake along with it. So there's a lot of different ways to go with ongoing support. And then sometimes we will add like a supplement like milk thistle or NAC or some of the blends, like even Advoclera that comes in the clear change program. We have a couple of other ones like detox antioxidants is another supplement that sometimes we'll put patients on, especially if we think there's anything potentially going on with continual exposure to toxins that we're unable to like get out of their environment or that there could be some level of genetic susceptibility that you might want ongoing um, detox support to. All right, well, thanks so much. I didn't wanna take up too much of your time tonight, but we went like straight to an hour. Um, again, any questions, don't hesitate to email us. If you have questions specifically medically, like which program is right for you, ask us. We can ask your one of your doctors specifically. Um, and we're happy to reach out to you and um, get you all set up. So thank you so much. And the next um, 
webinar I should have mentioned is coming up in two weeks and it's going to be on weight loss resistance with our newest member of our team, Dr. Katie Danello, and she's going to talk about weight loss resistance. So check your emails uh, coming up and you'll be able to register for that one. Thanks so much and have a good night.